Oh my goodness. Alright, so while they're in there, I'm going to be in here. That's me. Alright, so we'll be in here and we'll be cutting those door jams over there. Cutting these door jams over here. And cutting those door jams over there. And we will start installing floor in here while they are in there. And uh, let's see how far we can get, huh? What do you think? Alright guys, that's all we got. I guess I should look right there into the camera. I'll check back with you again around, say, 3.30. We'll see where we are. Talk to you later. Stay tuned. Lifeproof vinyl planks are different than your average vinyl planks. They have a very rigid core through the center and very similar to laminate. Therefore, it can be installed on just about any surface. If you read the directions, the manufacturer's recommends if you're going to install over vinyl to make sure it's not cushion back vinyl. We have two different reference points we can go to. This one is 45 inches and this one is 70 and a half. So we'll probably go with that one since that is the longest one. What I'm trying to do is center these planks up so that we don't have one little tiny, you know, three quarter inch or one inch piece up against the wall or underneath the toe kicks. That is annoying to do something like that. If you can get as much of a full piece up against those or underneath there, it's so much better. So right now we are at like 78, 78 and an eighth. That's what I have here and I'm gonna check over here as well. Seventy-eight and eighth is the number that we're going to go with. So in the living room, they've already laid a bunch of floor. So I'm going to go in there and measure the planks out. You know, kind of cheap to see how many planks are going to be involved in seventy-eight and an eighth, and that'll be able to let me either center that one in the middle and make them bigger, or put the crack in the middle to make the ones bigger. But anyway, I'm going to go in there and check out what seventy-eight and an eighth and how that consists of, and that'll let me know how big I need to make my starter piece. I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. With the measurement being exact, all I had to do was lay a full board against the wall. It would be a full board on both sides. Cutting around toilet flanges and supply lines is not that hard, it just takes a little bit of patience. As you can see because of its placement, the toilet flange will have to be cut out of two pieces long ways, but the supply line will have to be cut out of two pieces from end to end. Because of this skosh over the top, I have to cut it in two pieces. I usually don't cut pieces this small, but if this was new plumbing, I could just cut a small hole. But because of the skosh, I have to cut a small piece and put it in two pieces. In order to do this, I just measure from the wall to the center. I got three and a half inches. Then I laid my piece back there and just freehand around the supply line pipe. And then when I put the two pieces together, I just finish it off. This piece of tape right here is not necessary, but it's to help me find the center of the toilet flange. I mark three and a half inches one way, and then I mark three and a half inches the other way. Now I'm able to butt the wall and go to the center of the pipe, making sure that I burn a quarter of an inch. And also I'm able to measure to the face of the board behind it and go to the center. As you can see, there's my small hole for the supply line. Now I just clip the two boards together and draw my circle for the toilet. Now just take the small piece and fit it behind the supply line and take the other piece, match it up and clip it together. Looks like this might be a perfect fit. If I had to trim some off, that's the beautiful thing about this material right here. See right here where it's a little bit tight? I can, in place, I can just pull it up, take my razor knife, and trim a little bit off and fit it right back in so that it's a perfect fit.
It's impossible to get a good lick on it when it's close to the wall. So if you take a scrap piece of flooring and clip it in and a pull bar, you can really cinch those cracks up tight. Vents are real easy to cut. I have no special directions. If you guys do have any questions about it, leave it in the comments and I'll be glad to answer them. Now, it was just blow and go. Mostly straight cut pieces, so it was easy just to lay them out and install them quick as possible. Looks like we're getting close to the edge here. Remember we were talking about at the beginning how we wouldn't need to split these up because it would be a full board and a full board. Well, that's the way it turned out, so it's beautiful. But you'll see in a minute, I'm just notching this around, around these cabinets. But this is a beautiful fit. Yes, sir, Bob. Of course, we have a little pull bar, we call that the situation bar. And we only use it when we get into situation. Mm, we are in. When you're marking this last piece, if you'll lay your piece directly over the top and then take a scrap piece and cut the tongue off, you can lay it against the wall and just trace it with a scribe. By doing this, you'll get an exact cut right up against the wall with the perfect expansion gap. All right, so generally I like to put these in in two pieces when it's laminate, but since it's vinyl, I can actually bend it in the middle and get it up both, both sides. You can't do that with laminate. It's, it's impossible to bend laminate unless it's like a six millimeter or something. And even then you're limited on how far you can bend it. But this life proof vinyl blank is very bendable and if you need to bend any more, you could probably just heat it up and get it for whatever it is that you're wanting. Right here, we're at, uh, we gonna go with two and a 16th. Yeah, two and a sixteenth looks like it's gonna be good for me. And that's the front part here, two and a sixteenth. Uh, 
Ladies and germs, that is the installation of a bathroom. Life proof vinyl planks. Now I'm gonna go in there and help those guys. I may come back in a little bit and we'll run the transitions and quarter dime here, just so you can see that. By the way, I've been thinking about doing a um, how to cut quarter round video and I've been cutting for a long time and there's quite a few tricks that I learned along the way that I was like, oh, if I'd only known that 10 years ago. Anyway, we'll get to that in a little bit, but for now, there you go, that's it. We're gonna jump in here and help those guys and we'll come back and wrap it up with some quarter round and transition, so. And I can tell you right now, there's nothing like having a lady on the job. It's always good to have a woman's touch. Kelly has been with me for almost five years. She has a good eye for detail and she is magnificent at quarter round. She's been with me five years on the job, but also she's been with me almost 22 years in real life. Kelly happens to be my wife and we have four children together. She has been the best helper I could ever ask for. When it came to installing quarter round around the bathroom vanity, she took it upon herself to go get some black spray paint and paint the quarter round black. It looks a whole lot better than the white. She's doing the quarter round. Look at this lovely job Miss Kelly's doing. With this black, her little CA glue and everything. No nail holes. It's beautiful. All right. Back in the master bathroom, it was time to install these transitions. All right. So we're back in here in the bedroom, and we got to put a transition in here now. Uh, our job as floor installers, when we get done here, is to make something look finished. We don't do, you know, rough cuts around stuff. We try to finish it off. So. This carpet here is finished with one of these metal strips right here and because it's not so wide. My transition will lift over top of that and land right there. So I went ahead and left the gap right here to put my U-channel in there and a T-mold because this carpet is here, it makes these two surfaces pretty much level with each other. So if you saw my video, how to install transitions from a higher surface to a lower one, you'll see that I just put the U-channel in there straight on the ground. And then if it's too low to catch it, then I'll maybe put a pad, pad it up with some cardboard just so it catches it but it should be fine in this situation and just look right down. Uh, if this was laminate, I would have to notch it out because of these little things right here, but because it's vinyl, you can actually bend it, put it down in there and then still hammer it in. So that's how we're gonna do this one. And every case is a little bit different. So that's just how we're doing this one. 32 and five. I still had one more transition to install. I won't bore you with the details. It was pretty much the same way. Just measure, cut, put the U-channel in, install, it, and it turned out great. All right, so the bathroom is 100% complete. Hey guys, that's it for this life-proof vinyl plank over existing vinyl. If you guys enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and smash the notification bell so you can be notified when I put out more videos like this. I realize I don't have a mic on, but I'm in here in the bathroom and I'm pretty daggum close. So I imagine you can hear me just fine. Anyway, let's walk through and take a look at what we did today. See you guys on the next one in the meantime. Good work on that quarter round, huh?
Best look for ever had. Look, she went outside and painted that corner around. Does that not look sexy? All right. Get it, Kelly. All right. And then, of course, there's the transitions old Z-Bird did. And there's the other one. Yeah, we got some.